Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 2, verses 14, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 47. This is Peter's first sermon in the book of Acts. Now we just went through the whole story of the day of Pentecost. You know, the Spirit of God came, mighty signs and wonders, and you know, they were really behaving in such a way that some of them thought they were drunk, okay? Now Peter responds to this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and spoke out to them. And as I've said many times before, this is just like Peter. He's like the first one that wanted to just say something, just to speak up. So Peter says, You men of Judea and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, let this be made known to you and listen to my words. For these aren't drunken as you suppose. You see, these people weren't just mocking. They actually believed that they were drunk. If you haven't done so already, listen to my previous teaching on the unusual effects of the Holy Spirit. Verse 15 again, For these aren't drunken as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day, that is about 9 a.m., that's three hours since sunrise approximately. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. Quote, It will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Here is another good example how the scriptures say things like all or like the whole world or this kind of thing, you know, the world this, the world that, all this, everybody this. It doesn't necessarily mean every single person. It just it's a general statement. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Like Peter said, what you see here today, that's day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, is the fulfillment of this verse, okay? So we don't have any other evidence that there was anybody else in the world that experienced the outpouring of the Spirit as they did on the day of Pentecost, the 120 in the upper room, okay? So when God said, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and Peter said, okay, this is fulfilled this day, the day of Pentecost, okay? All flesh, again, is just a general statement, meaning that just different nationalities that were present in the upper room. And we talked about this before. We talked about how that day people would travel from all over the world to come to Jerusalem to celebrate, okay? And there they were. There were people from all over the world, but there weren't. the whole world was not there, okay? It wasn't everybody in the world, okay, that, ex- that experienced this. We know that all flesh just meant that there was just a variety of people people, nationalities, that was represented there, that experienced this, okay? Again, you think about something like John 3, 16. It says, God so loved the world. Again, that's not talking about every single person in the world. Because Jesus said, I don't pray for the world. And we talked about this in previous scriptures. I'm not going to get into this very deep, but this is my point. Here is just another example how some people could take one little verse or one little word and make it sound like everybody. Obviously, it didn't happen to everybody. There were people that were mocking that it didn't happen to, okay? There were people who didn't understand what happened. They were there watching. They were there spectating. They were not part of it, so the Spirit wasn't poured out upon them like that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be mocking, obviously. Continuing, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Yes, On my servants and on my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. It will be that whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And that is found in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. Men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did by him among you, even as you yourselves know, him being delivered up by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by the hand of lawless men, crucified and killed. 
Notice Peter is very sharp with his words here. He is not afraid of offending them at all. He is accusing them of murdering the Messiah. Once again, verse 23, him, speaking of Jesus, being delivered up by the determined counsel and the foreknowledge of God, you have taken by the hand of lawless men, crucified and killed, whom God raised up, having freed him from the agony of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also will dwell in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Hades, or this is hell. Neither will you allow your Holy One to see decay. You made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. And that is found in Psalm 16, verses 8 through 11. Peter continues, Brothers, I may tell you freely of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he should raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke about the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul wasn't left in hell, it's Hades, and his flesh didn't see decay. This Yeshua, this Jesus, God raised up, to which we are all witnesses. Very, very powerful sermon here. Peter is standing right in their face. Peter and all of the apostles and then some, and they are standing right face to face. They're facing these people off, and they are saying, we are witnesses of these things. Verse 33, Peter continues, being therefore exalted by the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, which you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit by my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And that is found in Psalm 110, verse 1. Let all the house of Israel, therefore, know certainly that God has made him both Lord and Mashiach, Christ. This Jesus, this Yeshua, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Good question. Like, okay, you've got us. What should we do? What are we supposed to do now? How are we supposed to make this right? Verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. When it says to all who are far off, that's talking about the Gentiles. That's talking about the other people who are not biologically Jewish. And notice it doesn't say everybody. It says as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. So there are those that God chooses for himself. And obviously, by implication, there are those whom God does not choose. Verse 40, with many other words he testified and exhorted him, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. And I'm telling you, if they had a crooked generation back then, we have much more of a crooked generation today. It's a very, very wicked generation we live in today. And notice, you know, it says that with many other words, Peter exhorted them and spoke to them and preached to them. It makes you wonder, what else did Peter say? You know, again, like I said, the scriptures don't give us all the details. Wouldn't you like to know? And perhaps we'll find out someday. Verse 41, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. There were added that day about 3,000 souls. Now this is a very, very significant number. 
The first Shavuot, remember Pentecost, is Shavuot. Pentecost is just another name that means Shavuot. Pentecost equals Shavuot. Shavuot equals Pentecost. The two names are synonymous. So the Pentecost, so-called Pentecost, or Shavuot, we read about in the book of Exodus. It says that God came down and by his spirit, of course it's by his spirit, he put the law, he put his commandments, he put his instructions and his guidelines, his precepts on stone, on stone tablets. Here is when he put his, the same law, of course it's the same law because it's the same God. Remember, the law or a law is just a mirror image of the lawgiver. Any law reflects the lawgiver. If you have a law in your country, that law is a reflection of those who made that law. Okay? If the person changes, the law will change. Okay? If the people change, if the people make the laws, then if the people change, the laws will change. If the people don't change, the laws won't change. May I submit to you that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He confirmed it by saying in Malachi, I am the Lord. I change not. He never changes because he's got no need to change. He doesn't have to upgrade. He doesn't have to update himself. He doesn't have to make himself better. He's always perfect, always the best. Never has to change. Never has to get better. It's impossible for God to get better. Therefore, his law does not change and has never changed. So the same unchangeable law, and let me remind you as well, it says well over 20 times. In the books of Moses alone, it says 23 times. This precept is forever. This ordinance is forever. This is forever, perpetual, eternal. God's law is God's word, and his word is forever settled in heaven. As David said in Psalm 119, his word is forever settled in heaven. When David sat down to write that psalm, when he said, your word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven, what was considered to be the word of God back then? If anything, it would have been the Torah. The Torah is God's word, which is forever forever settled in heaven. So God's word was written on stone in the days of Moses. God's word, his law, the same Torah, the same law, was written on the hearts of human beings on the day of Pentecost. That is the difference between the Shavuot of Moses and the Shavuot in the days of Acts chapter 2. But on Shavuot in Moses' day, When God gave the commandments on Moses' day, when God came down by his spirit and gave his word on Moses' day, Moses came down from the mountain and he said, whoever's on the Lord's side, come to me. And 3,000 did not come to him. 3,000 did not join with the Lord. After all the signs and wonders they saw, 3,000 chose not to go with God. And Moses commanded that they would be killed. So 3,000 died on Shavuot with Moses, but 3,000 were saved on Shavuot with the apostles of Yeshua. Very significant. Very significant. A lot of parallels are drawn between Shavuot in Moses' day and Shavuot in Acts chapter 2. Verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayer. It says they continued in the teaching, in fellowship and in prayer. Not just once a week, not every Sunday morning, okay? With the Bible study midweek, okay? No. They continued. They lived like that. It was their lifestyle every day. Prayer, fellowship, and obedience. Verse 43, fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. 
We see this over and over again, and we're going to get to this as we read it. Over and over again in the book of Acts, fear comes upon the church. Let me ask you a question. You who have went to church recently, when is the last time you can say fear fell upon the church? Hey, you say, you know, hey, it's the book of Acts. You, it's the book of Acts church, right? You want, a, you want the book of Acts, right? You want the book of Acts church. There are some of you even claim to have the book of Acts kind of church. If you do, fear should be falling upon the people time and time again, as we will read. Verse 44, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were all in one accord. They had all things in common. They were one. They were unified. As Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, that they would be one. 45, they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all according as anyone had need. Wow, they really took care of one another. It's a good example for us today. Verse 46, day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple, not in church. They didn't say, okay, let's go across the street from the, from the temple now and let's build our own church and we're going to call it the Church of the Apostles, the Apostolic Church. The original apostolic church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ. Never. They did not do that. They met in the temple. Okay, Jewish temple. Emphasize Jewish temple. Verse 46 again. Day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart. In other words, there was no divisions among them at all. Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord added to the assembly. The assembly here means church, ecclesia. It's the same word as church. The Lord added to the assembly, to the church. Day by day, those who were being saved. Another question for you church-going folk. Is your church growing by the day? If not, it's not the book of Acts church. It's not like the book of Acts church. And I guarantee you, you can have the same kind of thing as they had in the book of Acts. All you got to do is do what they did. That's it. Do what they did. Believe what they believed. And we're going to get deep into this in the next little while. So don't miss any of it. Once again, set your heart on seeking him. It says if you seek him with all, all that is, all your heart, you will find him. If you call upon him, he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.